five-year deal worth $150 million max with $87.5 million guaranteed. The Panthers have traded Brian Burns. He's involved in a sign-and-trade deal with the New York Giants. In my content, I do my absolute best to highlight specific trends in the NFL. And one of the trends that we see the most is what happens when you hold on to talent for way too freaking long. And just like what happened with the Denver Broncos and Jerry Judy, it happened once again today. So before we get to the content, this is our fourth upload in a 24-hour span. Make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications to help the channel grow. Now that we get all of that out of the way, work! look right over here, you'll see all of these wonderful human beings that have been able to make some money by playing prize picks. And I give away my picks for free each and every day on my Instagram at the Flight Mike and Snapchat at Flight Mike Snap. And right now they're hooking up my subscribers fat when you use my promo code Flight Mike when you sign up for prize picks. And thank you, prize picks. For the sponsor. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? The Carolina Panthers have had a very challenging year. I mean, this was supposed to be the launch of a new regime last offseason, hiring Frank Reich as your brand new head coach and giving up the number nine overall pick, a second round pick, the number one overall pick in this year's NFL draft, and a second round pick in 2025 with DJ Moore so you could take Bryce Young. One year later, the Carolina Panthers are in the worst situation in the entire NFL. They have a quarterback on a rookie scale contract, but no assets to really build around him. The worst part is the Carolina Panthers were already starting to move on from their assets before Bryce Young came into the picture. They traded away Christian McCaffrey to the San Francisco 49ers for a pretty decent return. And that was a move that I actually approved of because there was no point in keeping Christian McCaffrey if you were heading nowhere. They traded away DJ Moore. They traded away their future first. And the only asset that they really had remaining was none other than Brian Burns. Case of Brian Burns was probably the most fascinating because if they had traded Brian Burns, they probably would be in a significantly different position today than the worst team in the NFL. During the 2022 NFL trade deadline, the Carolina Panthers were in a remarkable position to take advantage of the Los Angeles Rams. You know how much the Los Angeles Rams hate their draft picks and they went for it with Brian Burns. The defending Super Bowl champions were looking for a player to fill the void that Von Miller left behind when he joined the Buffalo Bills. So the Rams gave up their 2024 first and their 2025th first and 2023rd second round pick in an attempt to secure Brian Burns from Carolina. The Panthers said no to this, which is absolutely insane if you think about it. This compensation in of itself would have saved the Carolina Panthers. It could have been something that they could have rerouted in a trade for the number one overall pick last year. And it's the type of trade that you make when you want to firmly declare that a player was your future. And in the Panthers defense, Brian Burns was a pretty freaking good player. But the thing is, you can't keep Brian Burns and then trade Christian McCaffrey and then trade up to the number one overall pick, but also trade DJ Moore and multiple first round picks to do it. That's not consistent. You're either selling all of your talent and starting anew, or you're trying to add as much talent as you possibly can to make a huge push for the Super Bowl. Brian Burns would have the best season of his career in 2022 with 12.5 sacks before having a solid 2023. But the Carolina Panthers are in such a bad position that they can't hold on to Brian Burns any further. So earlier today, we made a video Video on how the Philadelphia Eagles signed Saquon Barkley. And I guess you could say it was a very tough day for New York Giants fans. I made a whole separate video on the Saquon Barkley deal, the risks that were involved in signing Saquon Barkley for the Philadelphia Eagles. And I'll leave it in the end screen so you guys could check it out. And the fact that Saquon Barkley left turned into this whole drama. I mean, Tiki Barber came out and said, you're dead to us, Saquon. Good luck. You're dead to me. Which honestly is insane because it's not like Tiki Barber is the most decorated New York Giants running back of all time. And Saquon Barkley rightfully cooked him saying, LOL, yup, you're the prime example of loyalty to a team. I got the deal I wanted, secured more, which wasn't given to me before. So if fans are gonna hate me for that, so be it. But I never turned my back on my teammates and always had theirs. The Giants also would lose Xavier McKinney to the Green Bay Packers, which is a very tough pill to swallow. And they're also going into an off season where they're potentially seeing Darren Waller retire as well. It's not really 
really fun to be a New York Giants fan, but I always say that you could always take solace in the fact of your GM making very solid decisions. If you remember during the trade deadline, the New York Giants traded Leonard Williams for a 2024 second round pick and a 2025 fifth round pick. It's a very difficult move to part with a very solid player that went to a team that had hopes of making a run in the playoffs. What was also pretty cool is Leonard Williams even said that the general manager of the New York Giants kept an open dialogue with him throughout the entire situation. You know, I've been traded before and it was very abruptly and I kind of had like no say or anything like that. Uh, where in this situation, you know, my GM kind of came to me and, and told me that he wasn't shopping for uh, shopping me around and, you know, but, you know, out of respect for me and, and where I'm at in my career being a little older, he was pretty much letting me know that, you know, there was a few teams, including Seattle, um, that were um, on the winning side of, of the season and, and uh, going to make a push this year. And, uh, you know, he was just like, I know you have a connection with a lot of those guys over there. So he was pretty much like, you know, let me know before four o'clock today, talk with your agents and stuff like that. So the way it happened felt a little more negoti uh, negotiated. And uh, I think it, it, it went well. Because according to Adam Schefter, the Carolina Panthers are sending franchise pass rusher Brian Burns to the New York Giants, per league sources. And this time it's not gonna be for multiple first round picks. The New York Giants are giving up their 39th pick and a 2025 fifth round pick for Brian Burns, which is the exact thing that they traded for Leonard Williams in season per source. Then they're gonna extend Brian Burns, signing him to a five-year deal for 150 million with 87.5 million dollars guaranteed so let's break this down man i know if you are a carolina panthers fan it's not a happy day for you particularly because like i said before those two first round picks would have done wonders for you guys right now it could have potentially saved you guys if you traded brian burns in the middle of the 2022 season and it's a cautionary tale that general managers need to pay attention to you rarely get trade opportunities that include two first round picks and a second round pick i'm still in disbelief belief that the Carolina Panthers turned that down. But in this case, you really don't have much of a choice. This is a team that has no assets. They don't have a first round pick this year and they need to build around Bryce Young in a hurry. So a second round pick goes a far way in doing that. And there's no point in keeping Brian Burns with all those things considered. The Carolina Panthers are a huge mess that need to be cleaned up right now. And this is the first step in cleaning up that mess. The fact that they didn't trade Brian Burns two years ago was one of many in competent moves that the previous Carolina Panthers general manager made. Like Joe Person said via Diana Russini, a second and a fifth for Brian Burns, 16 months after the Panthers turned down two firsts and a second from the Rams for their Pro Bowl edge rusher. Now enough on hating on the Carolina Panthers because I don't need to rub additional salt in the wound, but from the New York Giants perspective, I think this is a wonderful move for you guys. You guys lock up a premier edge rusher in the NFL for five years and you're pairing him with Dexter Lawrence and Kayvon Thibodeau, giving you one of the most feared pass rushes in the entire NFC East. Now, of course, losing Xavier McKinney stings, but the New York Giants are on their way to building a pretty solid defense, at the very minimum, their pass rush. Of course, there are questions on the offensive side of the ball. Of course, there are questions with the DBs. Of course, there are questions with the wide receiver. And well, I would say there's questions about your halfback, but I believe that question was answered once they decided to sign Devin Singletary. But in this case, I give the New York Giants an A plus for this deal. I give the Carolina Panthers an F. And to be honest, if you're a longtime viewer of this channel, you know that I rarely give out Fs. You really have to work your ass off to get an F from me. And the reason why the Panthers get an F is because they could have potentially put themselves in a position where they could have rebuilt their team very, very quickly. But instead, they held on to Brian Burns for 16 additional months and instead of getting two first round picks in a second, which we would have all memed the LA Rams for mercilessly, you now get a second and a fifth. Now this isn't the current general manager's fault. The F isn't on him, the F is on the previous regime. Honestly, Dan Morgan is doing everything he possibly can with the absolute mess that he's inherited. And I can't really blame him for making this move because the Panthers are so desperate for some assets to start building around Bryce
Bryce Young that they have no choice but to make this move. But Scott Fitterer, man, you really screwed over the Carolina Panthers. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.